Uh, for a door, like, that's pretty crazy for just a simple rail door. Ahoy, salty dogs! Welcome back to StarMate on the Star Squadron server. Today, uh, I've got a couple of things to do. Um, I want to start by showing off some of the work I've done between episodes, and then we'll move on to a project. Uh, and this seems to be kind of how I do things around here, so that's what we're going to do. Um, the first thing I have to show off is a door. I have made uh, two new doors to access... Uh, what basically what we're gonna be working on today so the first door actually you know what I want to save that door for a second um, it's a pretty cool door and I want to I want to show it off in a minute so we'll show off this other door first um, this door comes in a little bit more of a decorated area anyway so I always like to show off the detail stuff um, we built this little like access ramp and a little catwalk thing I like that over here with our machines um, I added in a little bit of animation to them. Um, so this one has a little smokestack thing that kind of rises every now and then as it produces gray hull for us. And this one, I made the lava. It just kind of moves up and down, but it looks like it's flowing a little bit. If we look in, I don't know if you guys care to see how this is done. I bet you can totally imagine how it's done in your head. If you, uh, It's just rails. So, pretty straightforward. This one is rails on a timer, so pretty easy. Okay, let's let's go over here and look at this door real quick. Uh, this door is cool. I tried to make interesting doors. Um, I don't want the standard door. We've already got one that just goes straight up, so that's that's easy. It looks cool, but, uh, but it's super easy to do. So I'm going to make my doors a little bit more complicated. Um, they are activated by area triggers. So that's our first door. I like that. It kind of splits apart in half like that. That's cool. Um, you can see the way the rails are configured here because I haven't blocked it off at all. Um, one thing I think is cool about this door is that I did it with slabs. So that lets it have a much smaller profile. Um, it only, you know, you only need two blocks really to feel like it still has like a doorway, like a door frame, and, um, and it's not taking up as much space. It also makes it feel less industrial, and, uh, and I really like that as well. Um, whereas, you know, uh, this door feels much larger and heavier because it feels thick, and you can see the thickness with the slabs that way, and I think that's, uh, I think that's a really cool effect. And it suits this door. It needs to be a big industrial door. It's supposed to feel like one, and I think it accomplishes that. Um, the other two doors don't feel as industrial. They aren't supposed to. Um, this door, I'm, I really think this is cool. Like, right now, it's super simple, right? I haven't done any, like, coloring or anything like that. I just wanted to get the logic and rails out of the way first but this is one of the coolest doors i've ever seen um in star made and i have never seen anybody else make one like this so let's approach yeah so that was a cool effect right super cool and it was actually pretty easy and then walking through it re reverses the process here is the here are the rails and the logic for it um it's actually <laughs> Uh, for a door, like, that's pretty crazy for just a simple rail door, but, um, but yeah, I, it's a cool door, so, um, now triggers and things, like, they can be moved to other places and, and stuff like that, uh, the door can change how it looks, um, but, uh, but the way it works, I wanted to get that in place at least first, um, before we kind of move on from that, so. Um, if you're interested in seeing a tutorial for either of these two doors, let me know. Leave a comment and, uh, and let me know. Um, but let's go ahead and move on with the project today. I had a lot of great feedback in the last episode of people um, specifically talking about this ship and how it is docked. So let's hop in the build block and we can kind of take a look at a couple things here. Um, so I kind of complained, I wouldn't really say complained, I kind of mentioned that this ship is um, interesting to dock because it has the X sails that, you know, they fit, they have to, like it has to have a very 
specific place uh, for it to dock um, because of how far away from like center of mass the sails reach. Um, it goes over this building and under the building as well. So we already know, you know, the maximum area that building can take up. Um, so the biggest suggestion I got, and I'll put a couple of the comments on the screen, said that I should alter my ship so that the sails fold into each other. Um, interesting idea. So that's an interesting idea. We could make it so that these two kind of collapse upon each other and become a vertical sail, and these two do the same. Except that's not really feasible with this ship. Um, if we go, if we fly into it, we should be able to see how... Yeah, so here it is. This is the sail. So this is how the sails are docked. They're one piece. Um, to fold them like that, the sails would have to be four pieces instead of one. Um, and, and the reason you have to do four pieces instead of just two pieces, because your next question, of course, is, Lenscap, why don't you make that sail and that sail one piece and that sail and that sail one piece? When you twist them, um, they can't be in the same space at the same time. So if you want it centered, it almost has to go here and here instead of here and uh, you know so it has to go along this line of blocks and this line of blocks instead of both of them being along this line of blocks right so that's not gonna work because then the rotation for the sails is off and uh, they're not coming out of the right place that also would require redesigning the entire hull of the entire ship and I just that's way more work than I want uh, to put into this thing so instead what I'm going to do is make our station move to suit the ship. Um, we're going to build a docking collar here that um, is telescopic. So that means like picture like a telescope or like a, like a spyglass, how you can kind of tuck it into itself. Um, so we're going to build something like that. It's going to start here and then extend out in at least two parts, maybe three parts. And, uh, and then, you know, finally end up here uh, so that we can dock the ship to it. So here's a little insight into my workflow as I create these kind of contraptions that I have. Uh, step one is proof of concept, right? Get the blocks down and make it do something. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to do it exactly right. It's just kind of get the idea out of my head and into the game. So here's what we've got so far. Um, just proof of concept, right? So this is not the final version. This is not how it's going to work. Um, whatever. You guys understand. So uh, do I have gravity here? I don't have any. Let's go ahead and place one down because we're going to need this eventually. And we can just put it basically anywhere. Okay, that was close. <laughs> um, so yeah, proof of concept. Super simple. You know, it's a hallway. It's big deal, right? Okay, so now let me show you how this works. Now, there are actually two different steps that we have to take um, because I haven't done the timing or set up any, like, master control buttons or anything like that yet. So the first step is we need to raise the floor in the larger section with this button. So that pulls the floor up here, and that allows the smaller section to slide in. So now um, we've got the floor up. Step two is to retract the tunnels. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it's early today. I haven't, uh, it's my day off of work. I have had the craziest week this week. I don't know if you guys would be interested in hearing this, but I got um, a promotion at work, so that's awesome. But uh, it means my previous week has been real crazy. So, yeah, so there we go. So it retracts. Um, it's, it's pretty close. It's basically... It, it retracts to exactly, you know, the right size and shape and everything. Um, and pulls it far enough away that, yeah, we got plenty of room for clearance. And um, so that's cool. The idea, the next thing we have to do is make it so that the floor drops automatically. And I think to do that, unfortunately, I have to redesign how the rails are configured. Um, I just wanted to get it out on paper so I can kind of visualize and see what um what needs to be done to make all the right steps happen 
and I think we've got that so far. So we'll go ahead and extend it. So there it goes, it extends all the way, and then we drop the floor in the larger chamber. You can see it fall, and then we have our hallway. So that's basically what it's going to look like, or at least how the mechanism is going to work, um, basically, uh, once, we, once we resolve the project. All right, just putting the floor back in here, but I got this to work automatically, and I was able to hide the logic a little better. Um, as well. Now let's make sure that it still works. I think what we're going to do is something like this. I think this is going to work for us. That way nothing gets stuck. And you can't really tell from the top. Okay, so um, now it's... Uh, uh, what happened? Okay, I think that was fine. <laughs> now it's automatic. So if we uh, retract this, you should see this go up. It didn't work. Um, why did that not work? Because uh, this can't move as long as the floor is down. And I have it set so that as soon as this starts moving, that's what causes the floor to go up. Okay, so that did not work. It is trying to... It's trying to work. It's just not working. Okay. I got a couple more things to do. So I thought of a fix, um, but to understand how the fix works, I've got to explain how the mechanism works now and why it's broken. So the reason it doesn't work is because this final extension can't move, um, and moving this final extension is what triggers the floor to come up. Um, if the extension can't move, the floor can't come up, um, and then the extension can't move. It's like a self-perpetuating cycle, kind of. The way it's configured now... This activation module is linked to this rail. Um, this rail, if something is docked to this rail, i.e. the extension, then the activation module turns on. If the module is on, the floor is down. Um, if the floor is down, this can't move, can't undock from this, can't turn off this activation module. So what we need to do is change what causes the floor to raise. Um, this turning off currently is what does it. And if I remove those blocks, it'll work, but I want a floor there, so uh, we'll have to change the mechanism that activates the floor raising. And uh, we can change it to the same, uh, to be controlled by, like, the same button that causes the floor to retract, uh, or causes the tube to retract, instead of the tube actually retracting. Um, that kind of puts it one step ahead, and, uh, and I think that would work. Um, I'm going to make these changes real quick, and we'll test it together. So, simple fix. I've got it configured now so that if I tell the if I tell the mechanism to retract, the floor should raise at that point instead of when this actually starts to retract. Um, let's go ahead and... Let's see, I'm going to have to hop into a different core. That's the problem with multi-stage things like this, is there's so many different parts... And uh, you can't edit the parts independently of each other. So I want to add the floor back in here. I think we're still going to go with the wedges, just in case. But, uh, okay, now let's try this. So if I tell it to retract, it should raise this as the first thing that should happen. So it did. It worked. Okay, and that comes in as well. Great. It worked flawlessly. That's awesome. Okay, now let's extend it and retract it one more time just to make sure. You know how StarMade likes to break stuff. Extends beautifully. Okay, now the floor did not drop. Why not? I must have messed up that connection somehow. Okay, I'll fix that in a second. Oh... Really? Drop? Drop. Oh, that's the lower side. Okay, so I got it working out, but I'm not entirely sure what caused the problem. Uh, the two buttons on the back that control the inner floor... 
like switched somehow. <laughs> like these rails are backwards from how I had the from how I placed them. I'm not sure how that happened. There's nothing linked to them, so I don't. I have no idea how that happened. But whatever, as long as it works. Um, so the next thing we have to do is uh, we need to hide a few things. Um, I think we can find a way to hide this. So that's what we need to do. We need to hide this docker. And I need to hide this docker and this core. Um, I don't want to see those things from inside the hallway if we're in astronaut mode and walking through walking through the hallway. I want it to be surprising. You know, I don't want you to know how the mechanism works. Um, I want it to be almost magical and mysterious. So time to get on that. So to hide those parts was pretty easy. Um, I just raised the floor by one and added another rail underneath. So now you can see, I had to move these buttons as well, but now you can see the two rails are here and on the opposite side of the ship core. So that's those two before they were here and here. So I raised or lowered them by one and uh, that allowed me to hide that. Um, for the extension, I don't have the extension put in yet, but what I did was flip these rails on their side and docked the docker to the side. So now it's going to be underneath the floor instead of, um, you know, on top of it in the middle. And then we'll build our floor on top of this. Um, and then the core, of course, runs along the other side. It doesn't really matter where the core is, just as long as we don't see it. So, and now all we got to do is basically we lay down this stuff, kind of like that. And um, I hope that didn't place any blocks inside. I don't think it would have. No, we're solid. Let's test it. Uh, let's make sure it works. Now we have a handful of blocks put down. And uh, we'll just make sure, you know, that the whole mechanism works. Let's just retract. Brilliant. Flawless. Perfect. It worked great. All right. And now we can extend. Sometimes you have to be a little closer to the buttons than you initially think you need to be. Alright, so it extended just fine. Yeah, and it looks like the floor dropped. Ladies and gents, I think we have a winner. So we have one more thing that we have to do to kind of resolve this project. And, uh, well, of course we have to decorate the hallway and stuff first. But we also need to put a door in here that doesn't activate unless the tube is extended so that'll be pretty easy to do and uh, I've made a couple of doors I've shown off a few doors this episode so I don't think we'll make the door necessarily on camera um, but uh, but that's the next step feels good man so we've got two uh, conditions for the activation of our uh, mechanism that we built today um, and uh, and I've got it all configured I got the door put in and everything so let's go ahead and make this thing work. Um, the first thing that has to happen is the reclaimer. Well, I guess technically anything would work. Um, but uh, the reclaimer has to be docked to its pickup point. And um, I haven't tested this part yet. So you guys, this is live on, on camera. We're doing it live. Um, <laughs> so we're going to dock the reclaimer to its point, and then the other condition is an area trigger similar to how we have the doors set up. Um, these are linked into a flip-flop, and they control the door opening and closing and the, uh, the docking ring um, or the docking whatever um, extending as well. So now you can't see the pickup point here. I assume... That's because my station isn't factioned. But if we kind of go into build mode, we can see about when we touch it. So there we go. So now we're touching it. And that should have activated uh, one of the area triggers. It did not. So we're going to have to look into that. And I'm not quite sure why that happened. We may have to fiddle around with that a little bit. Um, but anyway, so what's supposed to happen is that triggers this area trigger here. This one. So that should activate when something's docked. And then when we walk through the pickup 
area, which let's see if I can remember where it is. <laughs> I should have really marked these things out. Um, when we walk through the pickup area, that'll activate the other. Yeah, there it goes. So that's going to extend our docking ring. And then after a couple seconds, it's at eight seconds now, but it looks like I could reduce it a little bit. The door opens. So then we can walk through and uh, down our hallway into the reclaimer. Um, I got a hole in the floor there. <laughs> I can cover that. Um, when we exit the reclaimer, it shuts the door and then retracts the docking collar. So pretty simple. Um, I do need one other thing, though. I need to f detect if the reclaimer is docked it, for the first time. You know, when the reclaimer is originally docked, we want to go ahead and extend the collar. So I need to add in a condition for that as well. Um, but otherwise, I think we have a successful project. You know, we still have to clean it up and decorate it a little bit. But I like the, uh, the progress that this made. So before we end the episode, um, I want to do one final thing. This is something I've, I haven't done um, in my videos before, but I think this would be cool. I want to do comment of the day. Um, I think that would be a cool addition, kind of open a dialogue with you guys and get your guys, you know, in, in my videos as well and not just watching them. So the comment for today, and I'll put it on the screen, is from Adium Misting. Um, and I hope I said that right. But he says, now I have a better idea of why your videos are so spread out. You cover things that you did that could have been videos in just moments. And uh, yeah, I, I thank you very much for this comment. And I, I wanted to address this one specifically because you're absolutely right. Um, this door, we looked at it for how long at the start of the video? I spent a couple hours on it probably. Um, and it's a cool door. But, uh, but yeah, it, it only took, what, 20 seconds to cover the door? And, uh, yeah, I spent hours making this thing and uh, debugging and troubleshooting. Um, this door was much quicker, but I still spent quite a while on it. And, uh, and I decorated the area around it as well. You know, so I spent a lot of time on that. Um, I, I try and balance, like, I like to play Star Maid. I don't... I like to make videos too, but I, I like to play this game. So I try and balance time that I can just kind of sit down and relax and play this game and uh, and time that I can um, put on camera things that I've done as well. So I, I try and create a balance for myself um, between those two things. But thank you for pointing that out in the comments. I definitely, uh, I definitely am, you know, happy to make videos and everything, but I like playing this game too, and sometimes I just want to play it. Um... So if you leave a really good comment like that one, um, then maybe next next episode I will address your comment as well. Um, anyway, if you like the video, there's a like button just down below the thing. Don't forget to hit thumbs up. Leave a comment if you have any feedback or criticisms. If you think of a better way that maybe I could have done the, the mechanism and still accomplish all the same movements. Um, I'd love to see a video response or... Um, you can tweet at me if you have um, requests for future content you know you want to see tutorials or something like that let me know about that kind of stuff and uh, but anyway until then I'll see you guys in the next episode stay tuned